something in short uh, of Cancer Fund. Um, this is, uh, as you may know, an independent nonprofit organization with no governmental funding uh, based on the gathering of money from uh, private uh, initiatives. Um, and um, I would just briefly say something about how it started, um, the vision and mission in general, Cancer Fund, and, and maybe very relevant to you, uh, what we mean with cancer relevance, who can apply for these positions that we have a call for this autumn, um, the strategies and workflow on how we work with uh, applications coming in, and of course the call for funding of the different kinds of positions that we have during your career as a researcher. Uh, and in the end, I will have some slides. Um, if you are new applicants uh, uh, to Cancer Fund and or uh, uh, research grants and positions in general, some advice um, uh, that you might may find uh, useful. Uh, so Cancer Fund started in 1951 already by uh, two people that did not know each other, uh, Eva Andersson and Maureen Idén. And, and they had one thing in common, actually, they were all, they were both um, cancer survivors. And they had the idea that uh, maybe there would be more people that would survive if the researchers got more money for their research. So they started a, a gathering of money and they uh, succeeded actually in, in uh, uh, gathering about 1 million Swedish kroner, which some of them went to cancer for. So this is the organization today. Uh, we have, of course, uh, the board with a new chair, Jörn Heglund, uh, the secretariat with the, with the secretary general, Ulrika Årighed Kogström, and then, of course, the scientific council led by uh, Klaus Kjell, who's the chair. Uh, we are four scientific secretaries uh, uh, that are um, advising and helping the uh, research council. Uh, Anna Carlson, myself, Jan Sedianus and Linda Björkenbeimer with different competencies uh, in different um, areas of medicine at different universities. The research administration is important to remember. Those are the ones that you might get in contact with if you have questions uh, concerning your applications. Uh, and I already named them, Anina, Lotta, Johan and Adam and the head of the department is Karin Eriksson. If you have uh, questions uh, uh, after this meeting, you may send your questions to forskning at cancerfonden.se. So uh, the vision of cancerfonden is, of course, to beat cancer. That is, uh, goes without saying. And our mission is to reduce cancer incidence or to improve treatment and cure rates, as well as survival and quality of life of those that who cannot be cured. Is this important? Uh, yes, we think so, because more people are diagnosed with cancer every year. So from the 50s and up to now to 20, 20, 2017, uh, the increase is quite great. More than 60,000 people every year in Sweden get their diagnosis. And uh, it's counting, of course, so uh, we estimate that about 100,000 people will get the diagnosis in a few years. But of course, there is hope, uh, and that is why Cancer Fund is funding research. Uh, in the 50s, only one of three survived, but now from 2019 and even more now, two out of three will survive. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, looks different from different diagnoses, um, where some of the, the diagnoses like testis cancers already have 90% survival, while some of them more severe cancers are not even on the chart. So there are things to do and the to-do list. We hope that you will have good ideas uh, how to make this happen. So the funding strategies of Cancer Funding is quite simple. We have a bottom-up strategy. We ask researchers from nationwide to send in their bright ideas to Cancer Funding and uh, the research should be initiated by the individual researchers uh, that we fund with project grants, but also of course by positions. So the funding is based on the quality of the projects and of course the merits of you. Um, and uh, we have, uh, apart from the project funding and, and funding for positions, we also have special calls. This year we have a fellowship in selected areas. Uh, in the spring we had a, a call of uh, prevention, which is closed now. Uh, but this, this autumn we have um, a call for uh, fellowships in healthcare research. Uh, we also have some special calls for larger research initiatives. Uh, as you see here in 2022, there was one in radiation therapy. 
But the important thing is that the evaluation um, is done by the uh, quality of the proposal and the merits of, of the applicant, of course, in a national competition. So uh, what does Council Fonden do um, in, in general? Of course, uh, we communicate and spread knowledge about cancer. Uh, there's also an agenda, for course, of course, to raise fundamental fundamental questions and public awareness to change political decisions, for example, concerning smoking and and uh, um, how people uh, live their lives, healthy lifestyle. But of course, uh, you're here to hear about the funding uh, research in Sweden of, of highest quality and rank. So who can apply for these positions that we are now having a call for in uh, the autumn? Uh, it's important to remember uh, I think that scientific progress has come from different areas. So uh, here I have some examples from the 50s until 2022, coming from prevention all the way to immune therapy and treatment, but there might also be other areas where we don't think about uh, innovation, but you might have uh, some really good ideas. Uh, so uh, we want to say that we welcome proposals from scientists in different fields. Uh, so, uh, uh, most of our applications are still in natural sciences and medicine, as you see here, but we also uh, hope that we will get applications from uh, researchers in healthcare science, especially from this uh, fellowship, but also from public health science, social sciences, and communication and behavioral science. So, uh, we have uh, funded research with relevance for cancer in all fields um, since the 1951. 50s up to now, and about uh, during this period, we have uh, uh, funded about uh, projects and positions about 1.2 billion euros, which is tall milliarder Swedish kroner for cancer research. Uh, we will get about uh, 500 applications yearly for research projects, and uh, for the call of positions, we have about 130 to 160 applications for all the positions annually. So in 2021, we had a record of 850 uh, million Swedish kronor and uh, funding for position and research projects. And uh, this makes up of about 20 to 25% of the total funding to academic cancer research. So what do we mean with cancer relevance? Um, we have a long uh, uh, definition about this, but in short, uh, we think that the expected outcome and the results that comes from the studies that we uh, consider cancer relevant should lead to a deeper understanding of cancer, better prevention, early diagnosis, more efficient treatment, for example, or higher quality of life for patients. And this can be enforced, reinforced by the use, the use of relevant models. For example, that you do the part of the studies on study material that is um, from cancer patients, for example, animal cancer models or in silico models of cancer development. Uh, but if this is not um, the case, the, the progression of the project is super important. So if you have a proposal where you have uh, point two not fulfilled, you not even you don't look into uh, re cancer relevant models. Uh, we we ask that in the progression of the program, there will be a description on how to fulfill point number two. Uh, okay, so how does it work with the strategies and the workflow for the call for the funding of positions? We have the positions that uh, we have a call for this autumn in in the, all career stages from dissertation. So uh, from dissertation, we have first the postdoc position that you can apply for up to three years after your dissertation, and that is the position that that um, that is for three years. Uh, the next stage is Junior Investigator Award, which is seven years after your dissertation, which is a six-year position. The Senior Investigator Award, which is 12 years after your dissertation, which is also a position that longs for six years. And we have four clinically active researchers, 50 to 70 percent clinically active, uh, for Junior Clinical Investigator Award, 10 years after your dissertation, and Senior Clinical Investigator Award, 15 years after your application. Uh, after your dissertation, and both of those positions are for six years. Uh, so this may be a, of interest for you. Uh, 
uh, how many positions were uh, granted last year, uh, which were um, <laughs> Uh, we had in total 29 uh, positions out of 127 that were applied for. And you can see here in this slide uh, the different categories uh, uh, that were uh, granted. And, and uh, that was even more that we allowed for, 20, for 2021, where we had 27 out of 160 positions. Um, so, uh, what are the... Uh, how can you be eligible for a posted position? Yeah, as I said, uh, you have um, you need to have your dissertation not more than three years ago, but before the application deadline. Uh, and uh, the idea with this posted position is, of course, to promote researchers' development. And uh, of, of course, Council Fund and prefer that the postdoc is uh, performed at a different institution and with a different supervisor do, uh, than during the graduate program. Um, and the uh, important postdoc position uh, that is for three years cannot be used to finance other positions. So you have to be a postdoc at the, at the position or university or the group where you started. The Union Investigator Award, uh, the formal elig eligibility requirements is that uh, you should uh, have your dissertation not more than seven years ago. And it's important to know that uh, you cannot have a position as a senior lecturer or professor. You are not eligible to apply for the Union Investigator Award. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, of course, to provide uh, a postdoc uh, cancer researcher who do not have a permanent position uh, to have an opportunity to um, start their own independent cancer research full time. And uh, even if you cannot be a, a senior lecturer professor, uh, you, we, there are exceptions of course to be made for applicants that has uh, associate senior lecturer or bul as we say in Swedish or and also adjunct professors for example. This can also be combined with the 20% ancillary work for example a clinical um, engagement. And then uh, the senior investigator was also um, a preclinical uh, researcher position, uh, and that is after 12 years of your uh, dissertation. And you, also here, you cannot be a senior lecturer or professor, and then you're not eligible to apply for this position. And the same uh, goes uh, for this position as for the junior, uh, that we make exceptions, of course, if you have an associate senior lecturer or adjunct professor. Importantly, uh, uh, you need to use the, the money from this position or the award for the, for the junior and senior investigate award uh, for your uh, position. It cannot be used for anything else uh, like uh, 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 consumables, for example, or other people's uh, money. It has to go to your position. Uh, and then, of course, for the clinically active um, uh, researchers, we have the junior and senior investigator award where you can combine this with uh, a clinical um, activity and that is between 50 or 70 uh, percent and this position can be taken out freely over a six year period. Uh, and this position is of course for um, uh, different staff categories, doctors, uh, laboratory engineers, nurses and physiotherapists of course. Um, and um, also we have this autumn, a special call for a fellowship in healthcare research for three years. Um, and the same uh, eligibility requirements uh, um, are for this position as for the other ones, that you cannot hold a position as a senior lecturer or professor. But um, this application for fellowship in healthcare research uh, can be applied for by, by uh, uh, researchers in all career stages, postdocs, uh, also junior and senior investigator was, but you cannot have a permanent uh, position. Uh, importantly, uh, uh, what is unique for this fellowship is that uh, uh, the applicant has uh, in this uh, application to take into consideration also the patient perspective. This is a novel thing from 2022 that the Swedish Cancer Society encourages the applicant to uh, describe the patient perspective in the uh, application in the designated box in Phoenix. 
So how is your application evaluated? Of course, uh, we think scientific quality is super important. So that is uh, uh, ranked from one to five. Um, that can be, for example, originality of the experimental approach or feasibility. And of course, the merits of the applicant that you should be an independent researcher with, uh, that is um, determined by your published work, uh, that you are, have your own collaborative networks, supervision of research students, for example, and management of research. And uh, last but not least, of course, cancer relevance as we have defined it before. There is a certain box in, in the application system that is uh, digitalized uh, where your independent research line should be described. So if you work in a larger group, you have to clarify how the project relates to, to the other projects that are ongoing in your group. And if you continue on a project that has been initiated, for example, during your doctoral or postdoctoral pe period, you should describe the relationship between that project and the, the project that you are applying for now and the previous supervisor's research. And that is included uh, in a special section in the research program. So your application has come into Council Fund and, um, before the deadline and uh, what happens now? Uh, so the evaluation process in short is that there are different committees for these different uh, positions at different career stages. And the committee members are about five to seven in each committee. They read all applications that come in through their committee and evaluate all applications. Uh, they make their uh, ranking list, which is compiled by the chair of the committee based on all these individual assessments. And uh, they make up a list of uh, five to seven candidates uh, that may be called for interview. That is applicable to some committees. Um, but uh, in the interview, you are um, expected to have a presentation of maximum 30 minutes, and that's followed by 50 minutes of question. So the final ranking for the um, for the applicants that are um, eligible for the positions is based on the combined assessment of documentation from both the applications and of course from um, the interview. And uh, the decision for who will uh, have the positions that are uh, called for now is uh, uh, made at Forskningsnämnden then in their meeting in 21st of March 2023. Um, and those that have been called for interview will also have their evaluation in Phoenix available to read. So this is a short overview of the things I said already, uh, that uh, uh, the call now for the positions opens of 25th, 25th of August, so it has opened already, uh, and it closes on October the 6th. And as I said, the decision will be in standing in, in March. Uh, so, uh, how do you get the application, um, uh, how do you get to the Phoenix? So that is on the homepage of Cancer Fund and there is a link to Forskning and you can find the uh, categories of your application. Uh, this is in Swedish, but uh, there will also be an English version. Uh, so, uh, uh, I will uh, finish now by doing some advice to new applicants uh, that you might find useful or maybe you are already uh, lucky to have, have other positions for council. Um, so, um, the, the scientific council is of course the highest uh, this decision board uh, with the help of the scientific secretaries, but your, uh, your application will come into the committee for evaluation of positions. So, of course, as I said, there will be a lot of applications and your application is one of many. Uh, and of course, uh, your application is, is uh, the committee's only instrument. So be sure to write an application that is um, attractive and um, clear. So this is the question that maybe you have set, set, sent in the chat. How will my, my application be attractive enough to be funded? That is, of course, a million dollar question that we cannot <laughs> answer anything. But I might give you some advice. Uh, so. I think there are four important pillars that holds up an excellent application. Of course, you need to have a really nice and interesting research question. Uh, but when you're describing it, I think you should be transparent. What I mean with that is that you should 
describe your position in relation to your group, for example. Uh, what other uh, research money do you have available? Uh, is it feasible in that way? It should be clear. It should follow a red line from uh, from the background out to what you really want to do. It should be relevant for us, for Council Fund, and it should be Council relevant. And you should be visible. What is your position here? Uh, and what is your independent line of research? So uh, the common reasons for rejections of, of proposals is, of course, uh, that there is a lack of transparency. If you really are an independent PI, uh, that can be granted the position uh, as a junior investigator, for example. So what are other grants accessible to you, especially if you're a researcher in early career stage and uh, your group members or collaborators uh, that will cover for the competencies that are required for the feasibility of the project? Uh, uh, there also a reason for rejection would be a lack of clarity or relevance. There are too many lines of research in your project plan, lack of focus, uh, or uh, there's a fishing expedition is often what you hear, hear from, committee, from committees, that there's a, the project is not, not uh, having a clear hypothesis. Uh, there might be a relevant question, but irrelevant methods, or uh, some, sometimes the project plan uh, missed the power analysis or or uh, relevant uh, uh, statistical power or the study cohort is too small. Uh, important for the positions is, of course, uh, the independent research line. Where is the independent research line in a large network? And it's super important to describe your independence from supervisors and collaborators in your research plan. So to sum up, uh, questions to be answered in your application when you apply for a position is, of course, what you want to do in your project, uh, why it's important, what is known already, what is the gap of knowledge, how will you do it, what is your previous experience on this project, your methods that are supposed to be used, which is important for feasibility of the project, what material will you use, do you have patient material, animal models, for example, what is the statistical power, why do you apply from Council Fund and is your project cancer relevant? Uh, will it uh, improve the knowledge of, of uh, basic methods or make basic uh, knowledge, for example, for, that is important for cancer funding? Why are you suited for this task? And uh, what is your independent research line, which might be more important? Uh, there should also be a description on who else will be involved. What is, what is your uh, collaborative network? When are they going to be uh, involved? And the budget is, of course, important. How much does it cost? Uh, why does it cost so much? And do you have other resources uh, for grants, for example? Where does it lead? Uh, uh, where do you expect it? What, what do you expect the outcome to be? Risk and gains. What is your plan B if it doesn't succeed? But most importantly, uh, read the instructions and follow them. Uh, that is uh, some annoyance of the uh, committee. And the final advice for me before you uh, will answer, we will answer your questions is um, begin well in advance with your application. It has opened now, but it will close in October. Uh, ask for advice and comments from your peers and senior colleagues. Uh, they would probably be very happy to help you and read uh, your application. Uh, be prepared to adjust and improve if you ask your peers and senior colleagues, not just to get uh, likes. And uh, a not unusual situation. Can you please look at my application? I must submit it tomorrow. That is not uh, something that you would prefer. So I thank you for now and uh, good luck with your application. And uh, if you have questions about the application or uh, the Phoenix system, you can uh, mail to forskings.councilfonden.se and uh, remember the deadline for applications is uh, October 6th at 3 p.m. <laughs>